Um, thank you very much for joining us. It's really great to see all of you guys, some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, so thank you for joining us again. As you may know, my name is Stephanie Fox from the Network One. I'm going to be moderating the questions part of this webinar and just going through some ground rules right now. Um, we've got the rest of the team on the call. We've got Julian Balding, Paul Squirrel, who you'll be hearing a lot more from later today, um, and Lizzie Gold. So just some housekeeping before I introduce uh, Paul Squirrel, who will then introduce our speakers. Uh, we'll have a five minute introduction now. Uh, our speakers will then talk for 35 minutes. Um, we will have a 15 minute Q&A at the end and we will finish by 1.55 London time so you can be ready for your next virtual appointment. Please do keep your microphones muted at all times. Uh, it'll be a lot smoother for everyone if there's not a lot of background noise happening. Uh, we'll unmute your microphone if we're calling on you to ask a question. That being said, we would appreciate it if you keep your videos on so our speakers have some friendly faces to present to. Um, as I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A portion at the end. But if you have any questions in the meantime, you can just send them to me directly in the chat. So to do this, go to your chat box where it says two, you should see a drop down menu. And instead of everyone, select either Stephanie Fox or Paul Squirrel. We're going to get through all of the questions and we'll select a few to ask our speakers once they finish speaking. All of the questions should be sent to either me or Paul in the chat box. Um, if you would like to ask the question yourself to the speakers, just say, I'll ask. If you prefer for one of us to ask on your behalf, that's totally fine. Just say, just say so. Um, you should hopefully have your Zoom viewing mode set to speaker view, which means that you can see one big box with the speaker in it. If not, just click speaker view at the top right of your screen. All of our speakers will be sharing slides on their screens. So if you can't see their little speaker win window when their slides are on the screen, just select show active speaker video. If you have any technical issues, you can message my colleague Lizzie Gold, either directly in the chat, or you can email Lizzie at lizzie, L -I -Z -Z -I, dot gold at the network one dot com. We're currently recording this webinar, so if you'd prefer not to take notes, that's totally fine. Um, in the unlikely event that the whole thing crashes, just wait a couple of minutes and log back in via the same link you already used to log in this afternoon. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to hand over to Paul Squirrel, Director of the Network One, to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Steph. Thank you very much. Hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, well, welcome back to Chateau Squirrel. Uh, who'd have thought we'd still be here, um, <laughs> but we are. Um, hello, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I think we've got people all over the world joining us on today's uh, webinar, which is fantastic as usual. Um, I would like to welcome you to the Independent Agencies Showcase. Uh, this is a, a something we've done before, but actually we're going to be hearing from three amazing agencies today who all featured in this publication that we do with Campaign Magazine every year. Um, for me, one of the best parts of my job is uh, the opportunity to, in better times, travel around the world and meet some truly amazing people who once run some wonderful agencies. Um, it's absolutely inspiring in many, many cases. Um, today, we've got five of those people on the call who are going to share their stories and tell us about their agencies and show some of their work. Um, so for the next 30 minutes, I'd like you to sit back maybe have a cup of coffee or something stronger if it's a little later in the day or hey if it's early in the day what the hell um, and enjoy the stories from some of our speakers um, if you want to know more about the agencies that are featured of course you can go to their websites but we also have a dedicated website which is leadingindependence.com where you can see more of the three agencies that are featured today's webinar but also the others that were featured in this year's publication Okay, so without further ado, it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome the first of our speakers today from uh, here in the UK in London, uh, Jason Fu. Jason is the founder of BBD Perfect Storm, the purpose-led and cultural transformation company. BBD Perfect Storm is a proudly independent agency and thankfully has been a member of the network once since its inception. Uh, prior to BBD Perfect Storm, Jason was managing director at uh, Publicist Chemistry and has more than 20 years of experience working globally with all types of uh, clients around the world in all industry sectors. He believes in authentic and meaningful brands and how they can make a positive contribution to the bottom line. In 2020 and in 2018, he was named as one of the top 100 creative influencers by Creative Pool. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Jason. Jason, hello, and the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Paul. And, uh, and thank you to the Network One for uh, giving us the opportunity to, to share with all of you guys a little bit of the uh, Perfect Storm story. Um, behind me there, you can see some of our fantastic and brilliant uh, Perfect Stormers. We, uh, we're about 45 people. We're based in Shoreditch in London, UK, and we were started in 2013. And I'm very proud to say that from the very beginnings of, uh, as a, from the very beginnings of um, the agency, we have been proud members of the Network One and uh, had the opportunity to partner and collaborate with some fantastic agencies within the network uh, on various um, global assignments as both a giver and a receiver of, uh, of those briefs, as it were. Now, I know normally uh, in these presentations, uh, there's a little bit of a showcase of the agency and, and then a showcase of some of its best case videos. But um, if you'll forgive me, what I'd really like to do today is uh, spend the next 10 minutes just talking about our point of view on the world and the industry right now and something which we believe is a hugely important issue for the industry, but also, uh, as well, a particularly important opportunity and one that we believe um, Network One agencies are particularly well placed to take advantage of. But, uh, but before we do that, um, let me just very briefly uh, tell you who Perfect Storm is and, and what we're about and, and why we exist. So we've always been an agency led by our purpose and our purpose quite simply is that we exist to build and grow brands from which the world benefits. That means we wanna work with companies that, that bring positive things to the world, positive in terms of the products they make and also the communications and narratives that they convey to society. Now, how do we do that? And, and in a world where uh, the industry is full of absolutely awesome, great agencies, how do we uh, stand out and make a difference? Well, we believe we are the world's first and only brand and cultural transformation company. And it's obviously no secret that uh, the world is in a state of transformation and, and never more so than now. I'm sure all of the people on this uh, call see the enormative transformative power of brands and the impact that they have on society. But what really sits at the heart of our agency philosophy and approach is the way we believe cultural transformation drives brand transformation. And what do we mean by that? Well, very briefly, we mean two things. One, that we see culture as the propulsive power through which you can build brands from the inside out to create movements and to then ultimately go on to transform culture. And we see the opportunity to grow brands positively and in doing so, positively transform culture, which leads us to what the core subject of our talk is today. And that is, we are on a mission to smash stereotypes. Now, of all the things in the world, of all the issues in our industry, why stereotypes, I hear you say? Is that really the biggest uh, issue, the root of all evil in our industry? Well, actually, we think it is, and we think that by tackling this, we could have an incredible impact on not just society, but our collective businesses in a positive way. What do we mean by stereotypes? Well, we're talking about the lazy shorthand that some clients and some agencies that marketers use to portray uh, cliched representations of target audiences. And we don't think that this doesn't just lead to ineffective marketing and communications work, but actually it per perpetuates old school bias and harmful and uh, sustained uh, inequalities and injustices. Now, all of us, every single one of us are victims of stereotyping, whether it's how women are portrayed, whether it's how men and masculinity is, uh, is portrayed, whether we're talking about minorities, disabilities or generational stereotypes, such as uh, the older. Actually, we are all victims of stereotyping and the world is full of unhelpful and harmful stereotypes that we believe we need to shatter. And I'm going to play you a film that hopefully starts to talk to that a little bit more clearly. Black. White. Straight. Gay. Working class. Middle class. Upper class. Age and what it's like to be old. Girls. Boys. Whilst it might be a little too extreme to consider stereotypes the root of all evil. 
there's no question they water the shoots. At BBD Perfect Storm, we exist to build and grow brands from which the world benefits. And it's through brands that help to smash these stereotypes we go some way to doing so. By getting to the core of the problem, by creating an inspiring new reality, by inviting participation beyond just targeting, by celebrating those who lead the way and continue to do so, by what we do more than what we say. Transforming brands to transform culture. And what it means to be old, what it means to be young, a young girl with her own hopes and dreams, what it means to be a boy and how he grows to be a man and what it means to care for himself, for those around him and what it means to be black, the truth. So the world see things for what they are and not for how they're portrayed. So the world sees people for who they are and not for how we're led to believe. To value differences, not condemn them. So the world sees brands as a force for good and supports them in their quest to be so. People, planet, profit. Not in any way mutually exclusive, but rather beautifully entwined doing good business by doing good business. It feels like a reasonable thing to do, right? Now, through that film, you will have seen a number of Perfect Storms clients, um, for-profit clients, and, and I should say we're absolutely a for-profit agency. So this is not just about some sort of social crusade. We actually believe that by better, more authentic representation of the people that we're speaking to, that's actually how you can challenge category conventions and disrupt with communication. And uh, you'll have seen everything from um, us helping to attract more women to the fire service for the London Fire Brigade, through to things such as um, tackling mental health with vitality and, and uh, more authentically portraying masculinity with fantastic menswear brands like Charles Turret. But boy, do we believe the industry needs to tackle this. Now, as part of our work in this area, we've actually been invited to join the United Nations Unstereotype Alliance. Uh, the Alliance is, is a coalition of uh, big global advertisers, uh, industry decision makers and creatives that want to tackle stereotyping and, and portrayal in advertising. And you can see racial, stere racial stereotyping, sexual stereotyping, disability stereotyping, gender stereotyping, all of these issues that fundamentally pervade society with the power that we wield with the communications that we all create. The Black Lives, Latin, the Black Lives Matter movement is clearly symptomatic of the ongoing racial stereotyping of, of the black population. And here you can see Can Lions entries, only 2.2% of Can Lion entries feature disabled people versus them actually comprising 19% of the global population. And shockingly, 4% of ads uh, depicting women show them in leadership or professional positions, things that fundamentally need to change if we're going to shatter the glass ceiling. And it's not just representation of these audiences, it's the fact actually as to how they're dimensionalised. So you can see white characters are much more likely to be shown as working. 17% of older people, uh, the older generation, are typically shown as uh, working in a professional context, versus actually one third of the US population being over the age of 50. Imagine the fundamental uh, underlying uh, unconscious bias that creates uh, when, for example, the older generation are, are seeking employment. So we really think as I say, this is fundamentally important as part of the responsibility and power we all wield as communications advertisers in society. But this isn't, as I say, just about doing the right thing and uh, what's morally right to do. Actually, in a world where we're constantly told 90% of communications are infective or ignored, is it any wonder 72% of men and women say most advertising does not reflect them or the world around them? But for those brands that are prepared to disrupt by simply uh, being more authentic and progressive in the audiences they portray, you can see that actually they, they achieve much higher levels of uh, purchase intention. So this isn't just the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. Now we're at Perfect Storm, we're, as I say, committed to smashing all stereotypes in, uh, 
in society, but we are particularly focused on one. And over the past couple of years, we, uh, we've established a specialist male division called New Macho. And New Macho is dedicated to shifting the narrative of how modern masculinity is portrayed. We believe that uh, the connection between manliness and, uh, and success is as harmful to men, and how manly you are is, is determined by how successful you are, is as harmful to men as uh, the portrayal of beauty was to women. And um, it's only in the past decade that we've seen that uh, a much wider definition of beauty and, and that stereotype starting to be, to be authentically tackled. So hopefully the film I'll show you, which is a minute long, will start to bring this, this uh, particular stereotype to life a little more clearly. How do men see success? Cars, bars, boats? No, not boats, yachts. Lots and lots and lots of money, of honeys. Don't be funny, being fast. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Martini. Shaken, not stirred. Never, ever stirred. Always tough. Triceps, biceps, pecs. Sex, lots and lots and lots of sex. Lots of success. Business, excess, careless, hairless, fearless, joyless, heartless, expressionless, humorless, relentless, emotionless, soulless success. Now, as I said, this isn't just a social issue and responsibility, it's also an immense commercial opportunity. And uh, this press release uh, relates to the fact that uh, late last year, um, Perfect Storm was appointed to work on the global brand uh, repositioning and strategy for Dove Men Plus Care by Unilever, a multi-billion euro brand, which a um, relatively small um, agency based in Shoreditch but proudly part of the network one has been uh, appointed to lead as, as a result of uh, the specialization and work that we're, we're tackling in this area. So as I say, we truly see commercial opportunity as much as social responsibility in doing this. So thank you for listening, as I say, to, to our point of view on this. Uh, my apologies that we didn't share some of the uh, immense casework, which, which we're enormously proud, but I know you're gonna see some hugely inspirational work from uh, the two creative agencies that also follow us. So I, I do just ask you to uh, consider as briefs come across your desk, uh, the hidden unconscious biases that uh, we're all prone to. How can we work together to break and smash the stereotypes that exist now in our industry to make more interesting, more relevant, more effective and absolutely more fun work? Thank you very much and uh, thank you for listening. I'm muted. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jason. Very inspiring. And um, I'm sure everyone will agree is listening and something that we, we all need to, to look at. Uh, one of the one of the many issues that are faces at the moment, but equally important. Um, we're now going to zip over to Spain and um, I want to introduce officer and gentleman. So we have Alex and Javier on the call. I see them there. Um, Alex is co-founder and ECD of Officer and Gentleman an independent creative boutique without borders, specializing in ideas-driven advertising, branded content, brand strategy for clients across the world. Whilst he was born in Miami, he has worked in all his adult life in advertising in Madrid with his creative partner, Javier. Javier is also a co-founder and ECD at the agency. Born in Malaga in Spain, uh, Javier has worked alongside Alex as a creative couple now since 2008 for international clients like Google, Samsung, Microsoft, and Reebok. Both Alex and Javier have worked in a mix of large and small network and independent agencies, great names like Shackleton, W and of course Jail, until they decided to do their own thing back in 2014 and form Officer and a Gentleman. Uh, guys, I'm going to hand over to you now. It's uh, your 10 minutes of fame. Over to you.
sorry. There we go. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you for having us and for everyone here. And um, we're just really excited to be amongst all these other great independent agencies. Um, as, as he just mentioned, uh, we are based in, in Madrid in Spain. Uh, we're an agency with about 20 people currently and we were founded in, two, four, in 2014. So just to, to start off, my name is Alex Katz. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm a co-founder and executive creative director at Officer and Gentleman. And my name is Javier Antonio. I'm also ECD and co-founder of the agency. So without further ado, uh, we're gonna uh, give you a nice talk and we hope you, you enjoy our, our story. Well, starting Officer and Gentleman wasn't something we planned. It emerged naturally as a consequence of a certain way of doing things. The two of us started working together as a creative team back in 2008 at the beginning of a global crisis. It was a situation that demanded high level creativity on a low budget with an even lower margin of for, for everyone. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Yeah, right. Um, something that was clearly marked, uh, has clearly marked us and which even today you can see reflected in many of the work that came out of the agency. It was a challenging time. In the previous decade, advertising had evolved a lot and the role of brands was changing. Coinciding with the rise of social networks, every industry guru would talk about how brands need to listen and interact with consumers, uh, give them an active role and join the social conversation. Most brands and agencies agreed and, and, and many tried to do so, but it seemed like it was a lot of talking the talk and not so much walk in the walk. Uh, but there were a few brands that blew our mind with their positioning and bravery. Uh, campaigns that inspired the whole advertising world. And the most important thing is that they were actually successful, right? So in our case, we were constantly trying to convince our clients to take position on social issues uh, with the work that we were presenting. Uh, most of the time, it, it ended up as a very promising campaign that everyone involved loved, but many times they wouldn't see the light of the day or they would become deluded as the project progressed. Uh, there wasn't a clear reason, maybe it was that clients weren't brave enough? Was it that the agency hadn't made merits to gain the, the client's confidence? Or maybe our ideas weren't good enough? But somehow we were convinced that we were on the right track. Yeah, so while the, while the crisis made many agencies and brands even more conservative, having a bit of a rebellious streak ourselves, we constantly tried to do the opposite. Take risks, try new things, go against the grain. And that trying and failing and trying again is what taught us to be hard workers and take on a do-it-yourself attitude. That non-conformist soul is what brought our creative boutique to life. But what changed? Well, a very special client came along and gave us the opportunity to put our theories to the test and actually do what everyone else was only talking about. That client was the world's largest adult network, Pornhub, who shared our rebellious attitude and took a chance and let us present a creative strategy plan. And that's how Officer and Gentleman was born. Since that moment, we've been working hand in hand with them in the evolution of the brand. But to our surprise, our work for that adult website captured the attention of other clients like Patty Power, Netflix, Booking.com, or AirAsia. Many of them brands that we never thought we'd be able to work with, but they all had something in common with us. They wanted to do things, not just talk about doing it. So it's no wonder that our agency motto since the very beginning was, let's fucking do it our own personal work ride that everyone here at Officer and Gentlemen takes to heart. So with all that in mind, now we're gonna show you, uh, we're gonna take a bit of our own advice and stop talking and actually show you what we do. So we're gonna start out with uh, a campaign we did last year for Pornhub. Reduce the demand for plastic. Single-use plastic. Plastic pollution. Tackling the scourge of plastic. Plastic bottles. Plastic is freaking. It's a freaking straw up her freaking nostril. That's plastic. 
might be the easiest way for you to help save the planet. Pornhub has released a new movie called The Dirtiest Porn Ever. This is part of the Pornhub Cares Initiative. And they're making out on one of the filthiest beaches in the world. Uh, they're getting socially conscious of porn stuff. And now it's time for the rest of us to pay it forward. Yep, so Pornhub for the last few years has been doing things that are trying to help the ocean. Well, no, I think there's a way to some letters for the awkward battle with the ocean of plastics in our oceans. You can go and click on Pornhub and donate to Ocean's Polymer. I was never prepared for the, uh, the incredible, incredibly positive reaction that we had. So now, uh, jumping over to the other side of the world, um, we're going to show you guys uh, a campaign that we did for the uh, British and Irish uh, betting company, Paddy Power. Yeah, wasn't it shocking to see such a big amount of people coming together? Yeah. Right <laughs> so, and on this next one, you, you guys are going to see something similar. So, don't get scared. It was, uh, there was no social distancing. Uh, exactly. There are over 500 professional football players in the Premier League. Can you guess how many of them are openly gay or bisexual? None. But with one in 50 people in the UK openly LGBT, something's just not adding up. As official partners at Brighton and Hove Pride 2018, we were facing the game of our lives. How could we illustrate this statistical anomaly to the masses and encourage footballers to come out and play in a more open league? Paddy Power presents the first official bus of gay professional football players. Fabulous and fierce with all the rainbow trimming and absolutely no one on it. Apart from parking the bus in the goal, we backed up our stunt with powerful messages and a massive campaign with everything from adverts in national newspapers to online videos, flyers, digital billboards. We even got our shop all dolled up for the occasion. And to help us all out, the best reserve team you could ask for on the bench. Not only did we steal the show, but we stole quite a few hearts as well. The most beautiful bus in the parade. People need role models. Becoming the pride of pride and getting everyone in Brighton to switch to our team. And we've got the numbers to prove it. Even when those we thought were on our side wanted to knock us down, our fans stepped up with the assist and together we scored the winning goal. Like in any big match, they invaded the pitch after the final whistle. But more importantly than just playing to the home crowd at five, our bus served to reach non-supporters all over the UK, the official bus, making them aware of the issue and sending a message of love and support to the players. Ready? The people are ready. Your fans are ready when you are. Just get on that bloody bus. Come out and play. So, uh, do, uh, have we stopped sharing the screen yeah. right now? Okay. Yeah. So. So why are we bringing this whole speech to this webinar? Well, because today we're facing a moment in history when this philosophy is more relevant than ever. After all, if there was ever a time when people expected to be heard, it's now. And it's in the hands of brands and agencies like ours to try and do the type of things that even governments aren't able to do. In short, it's time to walk the walk and just fucking do it. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful. Love the work as well. Great stuff. Um, for all of you out there watching this, please, please hold your questions. Send those to in the chat and we'll come back to it at the end. I'm sure there's going to be some questions that have come out of our, our first two presenters. But uh, we're going to skip right on now and we're going to go to, uh, to Helsinki in Finland where 
we have Ellie, I'm going to mess these names up, I'm sorry, but Ellie Tormin and uh, Yari Ladavora. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry, guys, if I messed that up for you, but there we are. Um, just to introduce you, uh, Ellie has a passion for building brands, especially with new tools like social media and AI. During her career, she's worked with Fortune 500 companies such as Volkswagen and Microsoft, Arla and Philips. Ellie has received various industry awards for her work and also a WCC gold medal for synchronized skating. Go Ellie. Um, she, is, uh, is, she is an inspiring speaker and uh, recognized as such in Finland. Ellie has uh, been leading the academies for both Cannes Lions and Eurobest for, uh, for many years. And she's also a jury member. Um, Yari grew up with all things digital and studied marketing at Helsinki School of Economics. After years of consulting at Hill and Knowlton, he co-founded Curio to build a bridge between the traditional and social media. He's received numerous international awards for his work and worked with clients, again, from small to large in the Fortune 500, such as Microsoft, Nestle and Nokia. Yari enjoys everything creative work uh, to strategic planning to keynote speaking. He's also done this uh, for the Cannes Lions and for the Eurobest, and he's leading the academies at both Cannes Lions and Eurobest. Um, Eli, Yari, I'm going to hand over to you now. The floor is yours. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Valiant effort with the names. Indeed. <laughs> And thank you for the previous speakers for their uh, fantastic presentations and inspiring cases and all that. Fantastic work. Yeah. Yeah. Very inspiring. So um, I'm going to share my screen here and then we're off with our set. Um, so first, um, we're going to give you guys a little glimpse of into the DNA of Curio. Uh, then we're going to walk you through some of the so-called secret sauce that has led us to some of the success that we've had. And then we're going to close off with uh, two case examples that showcase uh, the stuff that we believe in. Indeed. So. Yeah, um, basically when founding the agency um, somewhat eight years ago, um, we kind of decided on that note to kind of go on, go all in with social and that's where we are still today. So um, you could say that we in Curio definitely believe that social media has changed the way marketing works for good and very fundamentally. And we are still every day inspired to explore all things social. And uh, we approach social, what you might call a social first kind of mindset, um, but we share a big love for creative ideas and creative insight and and yeah we still get inspired by ideas that not just move people and touch people but get people engaged so we feel that it's really an honor that people engage with brands somehow so people share stuff and and involve their own social networks for brands and um, definitely share the thinking um, of officer and gentlemen that it's up to brands to change the world for better and, and get people on board on that. And we are humbled to be part of that mission. Um, as a creative agency, um, creative agencies not that often have data in their DNA, but as a social media agency, we definitely do. And from day one, we've been um, really interested to um, go through years and years of, of creative work um, with Can Lions, for example, to form an idea of how social really has changed creativity. And, and we do that still to this day and, and have some data for you to share also how social media has changed the creative industry. And yeah, this agency is definitely built around social and that's also um, how our teams and, and how um, we are constructed. So we do things really in an agile way, um, not with a really traditional like creative um, art director copy thinking, but more of a like agile way. And for example, we don't have production um, people 
sitting here at the office with us, but we use um, freelancers, whether it's for videos or podcasts or graphic design or um, anything that the client might need. So keeping things really agile and, and fit to the way social works. So those are the three main things that yep. comprise our DNA. Yep. Now the stuff that um, we believe in when it comes to our work, um, we have three things for you yep. within, with regards to this as well. So we believe in social brands and we've seen the, um, how, how social media has really climbed up the ladder to become ubiquitous in world-class marketing. So uh, as Ellie mentioned, we have been uh, doing this white paper research with Can Lions with, uh, about the Can Lion winning work for uh, eight years now. So back in 2012, it was only 20% of the winners that had social media at the core of the campaign. Now, throughout the years, it risen to almost 90%. Um, the way we approach um, our clients' work is, of course, we have all the legacy kind of frameworks and all that from brand, brand blueprints to building the brand promise and image, and then turning that into key visuals and slogans and, and all that. But uh, when it comes to social, we felt that this wasn't kind of like enough of a toolkit. So we created the social brand framework through which we've always approached all of our client work. Um, and it, it's basically built on these three things that are visual, uh, that are visible in the, in the campaigns, but it all starts uh, at two previous steps. So we need a big purpose behind the brand, the big why. Then we need to build the connection from that for all our key stakeholder groups, whether that's our clients, our customers, or even our uh, own employees these days. Uh, then once we have that connection, we start to see these branded actions come to life. And in the social media era in which all of us are media, uh, we can have like uh, anything from thousands of followers to millions of them. We need to be able to turn those branded actions into evidence of what the brand is actually all about. Uh, and then as a final step, since we all know how the content is ever more flooding in all of our channels, uh, we need to somehow be interesting enough uh, for anyone to actually pay attention to us. But in addition to that, we need to always strive for us to be somehow engaging so that the recipient will then uh, com comment on our stuff or be sharing it forward or anything like that. So these are the stuff, the basic backbone of what we believe in when we talk about social brands and how we approach our work. Uh, now, when it comes to building the actual campaigns, for example, we believe in this thing called evidence marketing, which stems from that foreseen uh, social brand framework. Now, based on our studies, we've seen that 89% uh, of the Can Lion social media winners, the stuff that the campaigns that have social media at the core of the campaign, which was same amount, 89% uh, two years ago of all the campaigns. These campaigns have something that uh, is actually done as part of the campaign. So really doing something, not just saying it. It may be something that is done in the real world, like building something, or then it might be some sort of a virtual experience. Be that either online or offline, it's something that you can actually experience. So doing something for the people to actually experience. That is another thing that we truly believe in. So we always try and find things that we can somehow bring to life, thus the term evidence marketing. And one thing we also believe strongly in when it comes to everything that we do for our clients is the need for always on since the media landscape has changed over the past, let's say 10 years. Now we have channels that can work with stuff that you put there on a daily or on a weekly basis, not like you have four big campaigns throughout the year. But in, in addition to those, you need to have, or you could have, you could benefit from the always on communication. Yeah. 
Now, uh, we just analyzed uh, earlier this year uh, more than 150 million impressions worth of our own internal uh, data from our social media camps that, campaigns that we've run for our clients. Uh, and we found that the, when we compare the always on content, the stuff that we've built for this always on visibility, stuff that goes there every week on, on whatever regular basis, when you compare those uh, campaigns to average campaign performance, we see that the cost per meal is way lower, which means that we get way more eyeballs for those. Now, the reasons for that are many fold, some of which are uh, because we have longer time periods for, for that visibility, so we can optimize the ad spending and the targeting. Uh, the other being that uh, we can optimize over time, so we see within the first two weeks, we see that, okay, based on A-B testing, this stuff seems to be working. Now let's put more money on that for the upcoming weeks and months. So we truly believe that in addition to those campaign uh, executions, you should try and benefit from the always on. Now two cases in point uh, that really bring to life the stuff that we believe in those three points. First one, uh, this is a recent, a TikTok first campaign that we've done, they did for a, a huge Nordic uh, confectionery brand. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Stephanie, please do say whether we have two minutes for another case video or should we go to the Q&A? Um, I, oh, Paul, up to you. I think we probably should go to the Q&A in a moment. What do you think, Paul? As long as we're quick. If we're quick, then we'll have... Um, okay, so a, then. another one, let's go.
So there you go. Um, that's the Curio way. Um, thank you for for staying with us for the two extra minutes. Guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Some great work done. I just wanted everyone to see that piece with the crane because I think it's fantastic. So thank you. And thank you to all of our speakers today, actually, for sharing their work and their time. We really do appreciate it. We've got time for a couple of questions um, and uh, we're going to dive right in here. So a question, Jason, for you, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, stereotyping and BLM are big issues and that everyone is talking about at the moment. A few months ago, we had Tarek Fontanelli of OnRoad in London making the point that traditional agency planners spend their days sitting in nice offices and don't really get out amongst the people that they're supposed to be understanding. How do you encourage your teams uh, to get out in real life and understand an unstereotyped world? Uh, very good, very good, and uh, and super important question. Obviously, Paul, thank you. Um, well, I think uh, it goes. It starts with diversity and inclusion. And um, last year, we uh, led the industry in terms of um, our recruitment of uh, minorities and disadvantaged people into the agency. It, I think we can only um, speak to the audiences we're, we're seeking to. Um, to talk to if, if we're represented by them as well and and that doesn't just bring um uh racial and uh, class diversity but also cognitive diversity so so yes we, we, we do believe that we need to get out of the london bubble but we also need to staff the agency with people that aren't from um a middle class uh white bubble as it were great thank you thank you jason completely agree um i think uh we had a question actually for michael gibson uh michael are you there um, yeah, hang on. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. What? Go for it. Great. Uh, super. Uh, fantastic. Uh, great work. Thank you to everybody. Amazing. A, a quick question for Officer and the Gentleman. Uh, I saw that in your Pornhub video, uh, people got marching on the street. Um, can you unpack that results a little bit for us and explain what was happening there? Yeah, so basically um, the camp came, campaign came out shortly before the the world climate summit so uh we can all we all remember the sudden appearance of greta thunberg and and all the excitement there was around the the signing of the paris climate accord which the, unfortunately my country didn't sign um so basically what happened was we, and we were very surprised that a lot of the signs that were out there were based on that the actual campaign and a lot of them i mean it, it went by a bit fast to show but that the main message was like Pornhub's doing more for the world than the government is. So it was mostly young people who had who had seen the campaign or really aware of the brand. And they were making the point that, you know, while the government's dragging their feet, you have a, an adult website that's, you know, putting in a big effort to, to, to raise awareness ar around the issue. So most of the signs were about that. And we were really surprised because we knew about one of them, um, which we had seen kind of, uh, in the process of, you know, looking for results of the campaigns. And then when we started looking, we found a lot of other ones. So it's really surprising for us, but also felt really good because they were specifically mentioning um, the campaign, but also mentioning the brand as a brand that, that takes initiative and actually does things. Great. Well done. Very nice. It actually proves the, that philosophy that we were sharing in the talk, and it really surprised us because uh, we got reached by several people like telling us how, for example, uh, in the university in Rome, they, they, they made a whole uh, case about, about the campaign and how it engaged with, with young adults and, and, and they embraced the, 
you know, the, the message of the campaign and actually went out to the street and, and you know, and crafted those, those billboards. So that's like one of the biggest examples of engagement that we've seen in that campaign. Very cool. Well done. Super Thank nice. You. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And um, we just have time for one more question, I think, quickly. This one's to Curio. Um, there's a lot of talk about social platforms like Facebook creating filter bubbles where people only see and hear what they want to see and hear. Do you think some brands forget the importance of mass audience on media such as TV, out of home, sponsorship, etc.? You want to take that one? Mm. We 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 definitely don't think that it's it's an either or. If that was yeah. the point of the question, yeah. Um, yeah. and a second point is that um, social media is is or well the tools that social media has provided for advertisers uh, are made for really niche targeting, and they're specifically good at that. Breaking but, the bubble. Yeah, breaking that bubble. Yeah. But there is no reason why not, why you could not get the big masses, if that's what you want, yep. on social, the same masses that you get on TV. So um, I think for those two reasons, there is no contradiction between yep. TV or social. You can get the benefits of the TV, the mass reach from social if you want and sometimes uh, social and tv can combine or add up in a really nice way such as for example in the tiktok toolkit case that we did yep so basically we think it's it's the best of both worlds yeah you can play with the organic and the earned where you actually play more with the bubbles but then you also have all the tools to make it targeted and just target all the masses that you want and yeah. and combine the both take the best of both worlds. Great, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we're, we're out of time, but we have more questions. Um, uh, so I'm afraid we're gonna have to stop it there, but we will put up our, our speaker's details. So if anyone wants to get in contact with them directly, and there we go, thank you, Stephanie, bang on time. Um, there we have the various email addresses for our speakers today. Uh, so if you have a question, you want to reach out to them directly, please do so. Um, it gives me wonderful, great pleasure to thank you all so much for your contributions today. We've really enjoyed listening to, to all three of your agencies. Um, it's been enlightening, it's been inspiring as usual. Um, before we dive out, uh, I just wanted to hand over to my colleague, Lizzie Gold, who has some exciting news that we want to share with you. Lizzie. Thanks, Paul. I'm um, just checking everyone can hear me because I know these headphones are a bit funny. Can you hear me? All right, good. Um, yeah, so today we've, um, we're delighted to announce the shortlist for the Indie Awards. Um, some of the agencies presenting today actually have made the shortlist, so congratulations, Jason and um, Yari and Ellie as well. Um, so the shortlist features, um, I think 24 agencies from 16 different countries um, and there's 32 pieces of work in total. Um, I'm just going to share my screen so you can see. Uh, am I going to do that? So that you can just see the link where you can check out all of the agencies on this year's shortlist. Um, if you enjoyed seeing the work today, then definitely join us for the awards presentation, which will be on the 19th of November at 4 p.m. UK time. Um, you might actually recognize some of the work shown today in some of those letters if you look closely. Um, you can book, um, it be free registration, you can register for the awards presentation on our webinar page on the network one.com and you can also register from the Indian Awards website. So I hope to see you there. Great, thank you very much, Lizzie. And uh, everybody, please do join us. Steph, a few words from you, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I also just wanted to say a really big thank you to all of our speakers today. It was a fantastic webinar, and I'm going to share your details again, um, just in case anyone would like to um, ask you guys some questions. So we did have quite a few questions. I know that not they weren't all able to be answered in the time frame. Um, but you can contact all of the speakers via their email addresses on the screen. 
Now, thank you guys all for coming. We really hope you enjoyed it. Um, we will be holding webinars at the same time every Wednesday. The next one will be held next week um, and it will be on the topic of pitching in a pandemic, which I'm sure is a very interesting topic for most of us involved. So just tell you a little bit more about it. For most of us, the coronavirus pandemic has meant that we've had to adapt business practices to the current environment of lockdowns and fewer face-to-face -face meetings. So with the help of our good friends at the Four Aids of America, the Observatory International in Germany, plus the AAR and Co-Definery in the UK, we've compiled the following list of things to do, don't do, and watch out for when it comes to pandemic pitching. In this webinar, Paul Squirrel, director of the Network One, and Robin Bond, founder of Co-Definery, will take a deep dive into these findings, so you will find out what they are if you sign up for the webinar. Um, and along with pitching in a pandemic, we've got two more new webinars announced for November. So if you take a look at our website, which is www.thenetworkone.com forward slash webinars, you'll be able to find out about all of those and you can register too. So they're already registered for already. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Again, thank you to our fantastic speakers and for showing us your wonderful work and wishing everyone a great day and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.